Well, so in our second part, we're gonna talk about the determinants of elasticity, why the, the determinants of elasticity is telling us why one product is more elastic as compared to other, the reasons, the causes that uh, show that one product is perfectly inelastic or inelastic uh, and the other product is uh, perfectly elastic or elastic in nature. So these are the things that we're gonna talk about uh, in our uh, next slide uh, and in, in this part, in this particular part. So let's share. Okay, so uh, that's uh is uh, the second part in which we are going to talk about determinants of uh, uh, what determines elasticity of demand. So the, the first one is availability of substitute. If a product has a perfect or a very close substitute available, then definitely uh, if the price of this product is increased, the people will buy the other one, right? Uh, so for that reason, uh, those products which have no close substitute, those products are inelastic in nature and their responsiveness towards the price is very limited. Uh, but those products who are uh, uh, having a very close substitutes available, their demands are elastic in nature. So product with close substitutes tend to have an elastic demand and products with no close substitutes tends to have an inelastic demand. Narrowly defined products. So the second definition is if we define a product narrowly, means a very specific product. Uh, in that case, uh, the product have a more elastic demand than do more broadly defined. Like, for example, like when we say medicine in general, so medicine, the demand for medicines are inelastic. The reason is that, the, that because when someone is sick, uh, he has to take a medicine. Uh, whatever the price is, so we are not. Uh, same is the case uh, with other things which are inelastic in demand. But when we are talking about a very specific uh, medicine, so there is a close substitute available. And for that reason, uh, uh, the demand for that particular medicine, like a, for example, we are talking about two uh, painkillers like a Tylenol or Advil. So if there is no some uh, allergy issues, so then we, if the price of a Tylenol increase, uh, Tylenol increase, so uh, the other one can take uh, Advil as well. So that's the main thing. So that's uh, uh, how you define the product. Uh, for example, again, uh, like when we are talking about the vegetables, foods that are necessities for us, uh, but when we are talking about a very specific vegetable or very specific food, uh, so if the price of that specific or narrowly defined a very specific uh, a fruit or a, um, a vegetable, uh, price increase. So we say, okay, I will eat the other one. So there no issue. So that's the reason that narrowly defined products have a more elastic in nature. Importance of the product in consumer's budget. That's the second uh, uh, reason that how we can uh, say that the elasticities are different. If the product has a bigger chunk in the overall budget of the consumer, then the product is inelastic. Uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, inelastic, right? Uh, the product is elastic. So why? Because if there is a change, so the change is uh, for the budget. It's a ch big change, uh, like a rent, uh, uh, rent of a house. So if a consumer is paying a rent of a house, uh, so almost uh, it, it, on average, uh, the rents are about thirty to uh, forty percent of the income of a household. So if the rent is uh, increasing uh, too much. So that has a uh, elastic demand. So they're gonna change the house or go for a smaller one. So th that's understandable. Uh, but if the chewing gum or some chocolates, uh, which is a very nominal part of the budget of the household, if the price of that increase, so they say, okay, oh, uh, we, uh, we don't bother. Like if the price is gonna be double, even double, then we, can't, we are not bothering. We are, uh, consuming the same level. So we can say that it is inelastic. So products that represents a small fraction of consumer's budget tends to have an inelastic demand. So uh, like I gave you an example of a chewing gum or a chocolate or a, 
or uh, uh, some small items in our daily life. Uh, so because they are very nominal part of our budget, uh, monthly budget or uh, annual budget, so they are, that's not a big change. Uh, that's uh, if the price change, we are not going to change the quantity. Uh, but if the product uh, is of a bigger budget item in our uh, monthly or a, uh, annual budget, so in that case, it's going to be uh, uh, elastic, right? So we're going to change that. So general result is higher price elasticity for more expensive items. So we can say that luxury items or uh, high price items have more uh, elastic in nature as compared to low price items. Uh, the other determinant uh, is the time frame uh, that in the short run, uh, we are rigid. As a human being, we are rigid. So we don't like to change our habits, don't like to change our uh, daily routines. So for that reason, uh, if the price change, we are not going to change it very quickly. But in the long run, people change their behavior, people change their habits, people change their uh, routines. So that's a, a way that uh, the, the elasticity in the long run are elastic. Uh, in the short run, it can be inelastic because of the rigidity of the uh, in uh, inbuilt rigidity of a human uh, body or a human being. So short run shows the immediate response of the quantity demanded to change in price and long run shows a response of quantity demanded to change in price after uh, enough time has passed to develop a switch to substitute the product. So we see here uh, that uh, the demand curves and the supply curves with a reference to time period. So we see that the short run demand curve, right here, we see here the short run demand curve is steeper it's inelastic and long-term demand curve is flatter, it's elastic. Uh, say, so when the price change, when the supply change, uh, like uh, the supply is increasing from S0 to S1, we see here for a short period of time, the price decreased too much, but the quantity is not changing so much. But in the longer period, the price decrease a smaller change because of uh, uh, elastic in nature. Uh, shift is same. The sh supply shift, we are taking the same supply shift. Uh, but the uh, demand, when it is uh, uh, short run, uh, the, the quantity is not changing so big uh, with a change in price, but the price change is bigger. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> in the long run, uh, the price uh, change is smaller as compared to uh, quantity. So you, you know that the formula is uh, quantity is a numerator and the price is a denominator, percentage changes. So if the price change is smaller and the quantity change is bigger, so we get a bigger value that is elastic. Uh, and if the quantity change is smaller and the price change is bigger, then the denominator is smaller and numer uh, numerator is smaller and denominator is bigger. So we get a uh, less value, less than one value. So uh, we can also prove it uh, mathematically. Elasticity and the total expenditure, uh, that's uh, uh, the what is the relationship between uh, the total expenditure or in other words, we can say as a total revenue uh, and the elasticity. So what is the total expenditure? How much uh, price, what price we are paying multiplied by the number of products we are buying, quantity. So how does total expenditure change when the price change? When price falls, quantity demanded increases. Uh, when the price increase, quantity demanded decreases. So the change in total expenditure depends on the price elasticity of demand. Now, when price falls, quantity demanded increases. When the price increase, quantity demanded decreases. So that's a law of demand. But what is the change in the expenditure? So if the demand is elastic, the quantity change dominates, dominates the total expenditure rises. So dominates and the total expenditure rises if it is elastic. If the demand is inelastic, the price change dominate and the total expenditure falls. If the demand is inelastic, the price change dominates and the total expenditure falls. So if the demand is unit elastic, the percentage change in quantity demanded equals the percentage change in price and the total expenditure remains the same. You see, that how it's work in our total expenditure. So we can prove it here with the help of a, a, a graph. Like here, we see that this is a quantity demanded and this is a expenditure. And we just discussed that expenditure is uh, price into quantity. So we price into quantity. So this is our expenditure. Uh, we see here, this is our demand curve and uh, the demand uh, is unit elastic, unit elastic. Uh, when the expenditure is 180. Uh, you see here the, uh, the unit 30. 
30 quantity. So it's a unit elastic. Before that, uh, it is elastic as uh, we see there as the number of units are uh, increasing or the expenditure is not increasing by the same proportion. Uh, so when uh, it is uh, below that point, it is decreasing. So the elasticity is less. And we uh, already discussed that in a demand curve, the middle point is a unit elastic, above is elastic and below is inelastic. So this is all uh, for the determinants and the relationship between elasticity and expenditure. Uh, now, uh, in the last part, we, we want to talk about the price elasticity of supply and the two other uh, income elasticities and cross price elasticities. So stay with me in the next.